The age old question, is an FHA loan the right fit for you? How do they work? What are the requirements to qualify? And are there any pros and cons to them? Answers to all of these questions and more coming right up, rolling truck. What's going on everyone? Steven from the Vargas team here again and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, you wanna elevate your real estate knowledge by learning tips, strategies, and other real estate related information, well then start now by subscribing and clicking that bell icon to stay up to date with our weekly real estate related videos. Okay, let's jump right in because I too hate videos that take forever to get to the point. The topic of today's video is FHA loans and in an effort to keep this video as short and to the point as possible, I thought it best to break down FHA loans into four different sections. So let's begin with the basics and a quick general overview of what an FHA loan is. The FHA loan program was created by the government intended to assist first time home buyers and although this has changed somewhat over the years, the majority of those who still utilize FHA loans to this day are still first time home buyers. The minimum down payment you will need for an FHA loan is 3.5% of the purchase price. Now I get asked a lot if the down payment has to be from your own money, as typically a lot of first time home buyers may seek assistance in this department. But the good news is that in many instances, you could still be able to obtain funds for the down payment from your family. Just as a disclaimer, I am not a lender or mortgage loan originator. So as always speak with your lender for more specifics regarding gift funds. Regarding the minimum credit score that you're going to need for a 3.5% down payment, we're going to be looking at a 580 credit score or greater, which is great as it makes these types of loans accessible to many buyers out there. Our next section brings us to the requirements for FHA loans as there are certain documents and requirements that you as a borrower will need to meet in order to be approved. So let's start with the documents first. You will first need to provide your lender with your complete tax return for the last two years, your W-2 and 1099 for the past two years, and your last 60 days of pay stubs and 60 days of bank statements. Once you provide your lender with the necessary documentation, then they will proceed to evaluate your DTI or better known as your debt to income ratio. DTI is essentially just your monthly debt obligations divided by your total monthly income. This is the primary way that a lender is going to assess your ability as a borrower to repay the loan as it compares how much you earn in a month in relation to how much you owe in a month. Okay, so we covered the basics and the requirements. This now leads us to our next section, which are the pros and the cons. And I'm more of a good news first type of guy, so let's start with the pros. For one, with an FHA loan, lenders are more lenient with your debt to income ratio as they can accept up to 56%. Other loan programs are not as generous with their DTI requirements, so this is a great loan program for those borrowers who may not earn as much or they may have higher debt ratios due to student loan debt. So essentially, FHA provides more flexibility to buyers so that they they too can achieve the American dream of purchasing a home. Another pro is that FHA loans tend to have some of the lowest and most competitive interest rates on the market. This mainly has to do with the fact that the loan is backed by the government, so the lender effectively has little to no risk. Other loan programs such as conventional and portfolio loans in many instances will have higher interest rates than that of an FHA loan. Not to mention that FHA loans require only a 580 credit score. I know I mentioned that earlier, but it's such a good pro, I figured I'd throw it in again. However, it can't be all rainbows and sunshine. Like pretty much everything else, there are going to be some cons that you should be aware of. For one, FHA loan programs have stricter requirements when it comes to the condition of the property. In other words, if the home needs a lot of work in terms of repairs and rehab, then the lender will not allow you to close until that work has been completed. The property therefore needs to be in good working order with only cosmetic issues at best. Don't get me wrong, there is an exception to every rule as you can always apply for an FHA 203k loan, which is a mouthful, but it's a specific FHA loan program that allows for additional funds to be added to your loan for repairs. However, this type of loan is not as common as your traditional FHA loan and is an entire separate video for another time. Another con is the loan limit. Typically, FHA loans are maxed out at a lower amount than that of other loan programs. Now, this of course varies state to state, but if you live in a city with high home costs, it may be difficult to locate a property that fits into that limit. FHA loans also have the limitation in that a lot of condominiums do not accept them. It was typically created for your traditional single family home, so they're not ideal for condos and townhomes that have associations. One of the more popular drawbacks about FHA loans you will hear is PMI, which stands for private mortgage insurance. See, due to the high loan to value, which essentially means that the bank will be loaning you 96.5% of the purchase price, the bank starts to get worried about loan defaults. Mortgage insurance is the bank's solution to this problem. Should they ever need to to foreclose on the property, they want to ensure that they will be made whole and the person footing that bill is, you guessed it, the borrower. 
Your lender will add an additional payment, which is aside from your monthly mortgage payment that goes directly into insuring the mortgage. It's a small price to pay if you ask me, but the issue is that mortgage insurance stays on the monthly payments for the life of the loan, which if you don't already know is 30 years. What I'm getting at is that you could pay 25 years off of principal and interest and owe less than a quarter of what the property is worth and still be required to pay mortgage insurance. Now it's not all terrible news as you can always refinance your loan in the future and remove your PMI as long as the loan of value is less than 80%, but con nonetheless. FHA loans are a great tool to becoming a homeowner as it requires very little money down and few barriers of entry. I mean, where else can you control 100% of an asset for only 3.5% of what it's worth? Only in real estate is it possible to increase your net worth and create generational wealth at such a low cost. Now, you may be asking yourself, is there another loan program you should be considering to compare along with the information that I provided in this video? And if so, then you should subscribe to the channel to be notified of my next week's video where I talk about conventional loans. Or if you're seeing this in the future, then the video should be linked somewhere here for your reference. Oh, and future you? Don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel as future me will thank you and present me thanks you as well. Until next time.